Right, thank you, Manan. Uh, thank you so much for flying from KL to Penang to join our My Startup Next Penang. So basically, like uh, Ben just mentioned, so we are uh, improvise our program from time to time. So uh, the difference that we have since last year roadshow is merely to create the awareness of My Startup brand. So My Startup Next is more on elevating uh, the content as a micro conference that promoting not only Malaysia startup but also to promote Malaysia startup into ASEAN level. So joining me today, we have some a little bit different because uh, we all know Zeus Coffee. A lot of people know Zeus Coffee. No one who doesn't know Zeus Coffee also know this morning because they keep on drinking. Uh, one other thing, why we force them? Uh, why we force them to do one other survey? Thank you to Zeus. So they do. We receive more than hundred survey for our brand. Thank you so much for sponsoring that. So let go to the first question. I know Venon since 2018. Uh, we have a chat earlier today. Uh, previously, he was uh, with another startup. So let me uh, ask Venon to share about himself in the journey of this startup ecosystem. Over to you, Venon. Uh, I think before I go into the question, uh, thanks everyone for your support. And uh, the, the whole reason of sponsoring is not because we wanted you to know about Zeus. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I hope that uh, everyone gets awake with, yeah, during this whole day. Uh, in terms of startup ecosystem itself, uh, I think I've been pretty involved since early days, uh, back in 2014, 2015, uh, purely because the business partner that I've been working in is very active in uh, investing in startups in Malaysia. Uh, he's an angel investor, and uh, that's how I actually got involved. Uh, I've been joining quite a fair bit of events and all, and because that's where I got to know you as well, through Cradle. Yes. Um, yeah, and uh, in 2016, uh, I was also involved in one of the e-commerce startups as well. Um, yeah, so started going into all these events and all. And I think it's very amazing because every time you go to all these events, right, uh, you learn uh, a thing or two, and then ultimately you get to know more people. That helps you to, I mean, Business is not just about just making money, right? It's also making friends and then networking and how do you leverage on each other to be able to grow together. I think it's a very, very good platform, yeah, with all these events. And I uh, always think that without all these platforms, how do people even know how do they run their startup, right? Yeah, so uh, I think it's great. And uh, I've had a very, very exciting journey. Okay. Yeah, of course, it's not all of them are, you know, Nice, nice up above happy, the sky yes. and yeah, yeah. I, I've I've been to on the ground before, having to go and pitch for fundraising and then get rejected one thousand times and all those kind of things. And uh, very very thankful um, during the pandemic that uh, it it turns out well for 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 me and also my team lah. Yep, I think uh, one of the key factor for the Zeus, right? So nowadays, if for everyone information, uh, I think Zeus has more than two hundred eighty outlet throughout Malaysia. So, uh, I, I heard your uh, interview with Ibrahim Sani and Nompet also. So, uh, from the start, uh, the, the uh, Zeus Coffee, uh, Zeus Coffee Brook Strapping about fundraising, right? Uh, you guys, I'm not sure whether you guys had done your fundraising uh, before, but I heard that you mentioned you are Brook Strapping. And what are the key factors that, that uh, the Zeus uh, founder, co-founder, and the management set from the beginning to ensure the success that you have nowadays? Okay. Uh, very interesting because, yes, we, we, we bootstrapped, we started off um, without fundraising and whatnot. Um, but what we've, what we've learned throughout the entire journey was very much how do we put in or give in our all, right? Or put in all our bets, but I'm not asking you to put in your bets entirely. Lah. But during that time, it was very much pandemic. Yeah? Yep. And then we were thinking like, what do we have to do? We've got one chance. We see the opportunity. We see that it's growing. So then that is when where all the co-founders actually decided that, hey, let's put in all our bets. Let's put in all our effort. But again, I think it's also timing. Timing. Yeah, I think it's also timing. I think timing is the most important part of our journey. Um, we started right before COVID. Yeah, that was back in December 2019. Okay. Yeah. 
And then Manetau, of course, you have your MCO in March 2020. And of course, everything is like, wow, what's going to happen next, right? right. And then you don't know what's going to happen. And, uh, but we were very, very thankful because we were digital ready from the very beginning. Okay. Yeah. And then that's where we see opportunity. Yeah, whereby there's a shift in terms of trend. When we first started, the biggest challenge is acquiring customers. But when it was MCO, acquiring customers became much easier. People were not buying ads. Ads become cheaper. Yeah, space became cheaper for us to grow. And that's when we doubled down and then we said, hey, let's do this and scale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also very, very fortunate that... Um, I, I think, I think in, in our journey itself, I right, always use... I mean, luck. Lah. Because in 2021, a lot of banks were also very, very uh, friendly to us. Okay. Uh, probably because bankers have KPI, nobody's borrowing money, right? So they were like, oh, this coffee is growing, so I'm going to lend you more money. Lah. And uh, yeah, so, so we went through that timing, luck, scale. Yep. And then only until earlier this year, then we thought that um, th there were a few people that approached us. Yeah, then only we started to look into, oh, maybe it's about time that we can fundraise and all. And it's really no one recipe on how we wanted to do this or did we even plan about this? A lot of times investors always ask you, like, what's your fire plan? I know there are some, some VCs PE yep. here, but yep. yeah, they always ask you, but what's like your three years fire plan? And then when they ask us, what's your fire plan? Uh, bro, I'm only three years old, right? Uh, yeah. How am I going to know what's going to happen in the next five years? Yeah. And again, really... What I've learned over the entire pandemic is, or uh, what I'm certain about is uncertainty. Things change throughout the entire time, but really how do you adapt along the way? Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of Zeus and how we really firefight throughout the entire journey and uh, be who we are. Yep, uh, yeah. maybe to add on to that point, uh, because uh, when you talk about pandemic, you talk about the COVID, you uh, started right before the pandemic. There's always be uh, some transform transform uh, transformative moment that redefine Zeus' journey and help you guys uh, explain. Uh, can you share about the pivotal decision that been made prior to that uh, because of that COVID that you have to make a tough decision that make sure that uh, for the next three or five years Zeus still in the market. So you're asking whether if we make any tough decisions during, during that. Yeah, because during I think a lot of retail at the point in time before, because when we start the COVID, right, people like say maybe two weeks, then after a week, it become four weeks. Like similar like cradle, it's just like, okay, no one want, want to bring laptop home. So everyone just fun, sleep, don't work. So semua ni tipu je, tak, tak buat kerja pun. Right? Then after that, it become like three months, six months. How do you make sure... Uh, I mean, uh, the momentum when you guys started still maintain, and after that, what is the decision that you made, the tough decision that you made to ensure that the sustainability of that? I think it's just nothing to do at home. You just want to do more work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I don't, I don't think there's any one pivotal thing uh, that we were thinking during that time, but very much in terms of uh, keeping ourselves on top of our toes. La, because you don't know what's going to happen Next, right? Yeah, so you just constantly uh, be very, very defensive. Everything you do, you just make sure that it's very, very disciplined. Now, of course, a lot of times, startups, when you scale, um, you open up more, you have better top line, and then, you know, you let loose a bit in terms of your bottom line and what, right? But for us, is that because it's pandemic and then you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, then you, you become very, very disciplined. Uh. Yeah, you become very, very disciplined. And... Again, I think we were fortunate during that time where... Um, I'll give you an example, right? I'll give yep, you an example. Yep. Uh, again, this is 2021 because that was the time when we started to scale. In January 2021, if you remember, right before Chinese New Year, there was actually a lockdown that was announced. Yeah. Then we immediately called for an emergency meeting. But okay. we were essential services, we can go to office. So we called for an emergency meeting, went in the meeting room. I still remember the meeting room is this morning, so all of us were like in the meeting room and we're like, what's going to happen next? Can we still pull this through? I mean, during that time, we had like 18 stores, we were doing okay, but what happens in the next lockdown? Yeah. So then we say, okay, let's, you know, if we cannot pull through this, then maybe we should, um, those not performing well stores, then we cut. Lah. Maybe we should cut some salaries and whatnot as well. Yeah. And 
we were very, very cautious, but then we didn't even want to announce it. And then we scared people don't come to work tomorrow and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah so uh, yeah, so these are things that we do uh, during then and we're very, very cautious and then monitor very, very closely. Uh. And I think one key takeaway from this is that I think as uh, co-founders or even management in companies, right, is that how, how much you really take your baby close to your heart, uh. Uh, we look at sales like every hour, every half an hour and see, wow, why is sales so low? Then uh? you start calling the shop and all. I, th I think these are things that we do uh, that's slightly different and help us to be where we are today. Uh. But in terms of the competitor in the market, right? So uh, previously, when I was uh, uh, in middle, middle, uh, maybe in primary school or secondary school, this kind of coffee is quite difficult or it's not cannot be buy in one or two ringgit cup. So most of us just go to TO, Kopi O. Mm. But now I heard, uh, maybe I, I read some of the article mentioned that you guys, uh, one of the specialty of Zeus Coffee compared to Starbucks, compared to Kopi Kenanga whatsoever, is to make sure this specialty of coffee is accessible by everyone. So how do you make sure Zeus Coffee can be accessible by everyone? Uh, how you strategize that mm. promotion or how you make sure this coffee uh, Zeus Coffee will be the number one top compared to the other coffee in the market. Hmm. Example, even though in our uh, mall at the uh, Sawi Puta Tower, we have like more than five brands. Coffee Bean, uh, Gigi Coffee, hmm. or even though nearby this road also you have hmm. local coffee yeah. shop. How do you make sure that relevancy in the market? I think it's a combination of many things. But if you're talking about accessibility alone, it's not so much of just price point, but it's also availability yeah so when we first look into accessibility first thing is that it has to be affordable just so that people can access to the brand then the next part is really how many more stores can we build closer to the community closer to the people to be able to access uh, to us and then the third part is really how well do we do in terms of our products yeah and of course to create that on top of mind brand where, um, or just take two steps back prior to Zeus, I think a lot of times when you think of coffee, the first thing that comes to your mind is always Starbucks. The first thing that comes to your mind in terms of burger will always be McDonald's. Yeah, but the thing is that how do you change that thing from, um, you know, instead of McDonald's could be another brand. Yeah, probably if let's say Burger Lab is scaling, then uh, it could be Burger Lab as well, right? Then uh, now is that instead of Starbucks, how do I make sure that my customers always think of us? Of course, then it's the strategies in terms of the discounts that you provide to them that they are so used to buying, then eventually convert. And I think the beauty about coffee is really, uh, it's a legal drug. Lah. Yeah. So when you have tried or we've acquired a customer, uh, a lot of times customers are much more loyal uh, to the brand. And, and I think this is how we make um, ourselves much more accessible to, to everyone. Okay, uh, to add on to that uh, question. So, uh, some of the management, I mean the top management in the office always mention about innovation and strategic thinking. So, how do you, how do you see this element play a role in evolution of the Zeus Coffee? Uh, maybe you can share some example of practice that have been done through Zeus Coffee uh, from the innovation and strategic thinking that affected the company grow nowadays? Okay, I think innovation and strategic thinking is the buzzword. Please use it when you're fundraising. Yeah. <laughs> but if let's say um, on a day-to-day, -day, right, it's just ultimately how adventurous are you wanting to try things. For instance, I'll give you an example. Innovating one new feature on the app itself is really something that we've probably gone through something that we don't like. And then the next thing is that, how do I do better, right? Yeah, and uh, the example that I'm going to give is uh, a real experience that we had. And um, so what we had during back then was, uh, again, I think this was 2021, we had our first outlet in Johor, Johor Baru. This was Mount Austin, always remember, because uh, we were not able to travel interstate, but we were essential services, we went. so. The entire office went over to, to, to JB. 
Yeah, and then uh, we're again very fortunate that the community around there likes us a lot. So people were queuing and then, uh, no, in fact, there was no queue, but people were just, you know, swam the entire outlet. Yeah, and our customers are all very smart because it's like a remark section, right? So they say, oh, come and pick up 3 p.m. Come and pick up 4 p.m. So us, we got into a mess. We didn't know how to manage this. Then we went back to the office and did like post-mortem and said that, wow, how can we actually do better, right? And uh, just so that my customers don't have to put 3 p.m., 4 p.m., and then we don't know how to manage all of these. And that's when, of course, the buzzword here again is innovating features, right? But it's just, I don't like how it is, lah. And I think as startup or, or business founders is constantly grilling yourself, what do you not like about yourself and constantly improve, right? So what we did after that was to come up with a scheduling feature um, to, for our customers to schedule uh, their orders in advance. So say if you want to pick up your order at 3 p.m., you can schedule at 9 a.m. And then the order only pops up in the POS or the system in the store at 2.45 yeah, now uh, we have slightly better system where it calculates how many orders being processed and how much time does it take. Then only it'll pop up for the barista. Yeah, then it doesn't create that, oh, I have this thing that I need to do at when, right? And that's how innovation comes about. Lah. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's also like questions where people always ask, oh, how do you churn out so many different flavors all the time? It's also us being adventurous. Uh, that we want to see new things coming out from our end and then empowering the team and say, that, hey, how do you come up with one flavor every month? Yeah, then eventually you cannot handle that because of supply chain and you increase that. But again, I still want to see so many flavors every month, right? How do I optimize? Then in between, there's a lot of parts that you optimize and then do better. And the, the nicer word is innovation. Lah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, this more, uh, this, the next question will be more on uh, the choices of the coffee itself, right? So people always say when, when they do uh, advertisement about coffee, it's all about the aromatic of the coffee. Mm. So how, how Zeus Coffee maintain the quality of your coffee bean, number one? And number two, how do you, how do you ensure uh, for the next three to five years, right? So we, coffee become uh, something that we can say, like, I can say, even though I'm not a coffee lover, Mm. But I can say uh, it's essential for some of the, even though in, in the office, a lot of people, I need my coffee for before I can start meeting. So how do you make sure Zeus in the next three to five years or so uh, still uh, become more innovative, become more creative, become more, uh, uh, I say, uh, sedap lah, uh, for, the, for the new customer to be acquired in the future? Okay. Um, I'll answer the second question first because I've got the answer on my mind. The next one, I'll jump back later. Okay. So the question, the second question is that over the next three to five years, how do I constantly acquire customers like yourself, right? Yes. Who doesn't like coffee and all. I think uh, that's the beauty of uh, what we've developed. And um, in fact, just some stats, 70% of our customers or 70% of our sales actually come from what we call fun drinks. Yeah which are, are drinks like your uh, gula melaka latte, your Spanish latte and all. And 30% comes from more staple, like your non-sugar, your just typical latte, your CEO latte, and also your Americanos. Yep. And how we see the entire customer journey, right, is very much utilizing all these fun drinks to convert the customer into a stable coffee. Because when you drop into the staple coffee customer base, you won't go anymore because it's drugs, right? Well, sorry, I shouldn't be saying this, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for instance, today you were to try Zeus. The acquisition point can come from many kinds of flavors. It could come from chocolate. It could come from um, maybe a, a flavored drink that we've rolled out. You've tried, and then eventually you, you go through that. And I'll tell you a, a bit of my own customer journey, right? I started off drinking coffee before Zeus even existed. And my first acquisition point was matcha frat. Then the second drink was matcha latte. Yeah, and I went into caramel latte, latte, then only Americano. Yeah, and that was my journey. And that acquisition point was matcha frat, right? And if you realize, or if you actually look into all these sales data and whatnot, the biggest sales that come from in terms of Starbucks is actually frat. Yeah. 
And for us, it's also the same thing. And I think a lot of bubble tea player does the same as well, which is to constantly use LTO because you have so many different kind. LTO stands for limited limited time only to be able to attract different kind of customers and eventually stay with the most staple staple one, which is your typical uh, milk pearl bubble tea. Yeah, and uh, that is the strategy that we've yep. been using. Yep. and uh, that is also the reason why we roll out so many new LTOs every six weeks. Yeah, and sorry if you don't mind to repeat the first question again. So how you choose the quality of your coffee bean? Okay, uh, okay, quality of coffee bean. Right, I'll tell you a bit more in terms of this. Uh, it's a bit technical. So the first, very very first version, right, of our coffee bean is actually a single origin uh, Brazil beans. Yeah, oh, and please. for myself, I like it more acidic and whatnot. Wow, it's very aromatic and all, right? But the thing is that. Our target market is not that. Okay. Yeah, our target market is not that. 80% or I would say probably 95% of our customers don't even know that what's the difference between Brazilian beans and Colombian beans and uh, Ethiopian uh, and, and whatnot, right? Our, our customer base is the masses. Uh, again, it's much more accessible. That's why we open in locations like Mersing, in Bukit Ram, in, in, in um, some places that I've never been before. Yeah, and these people don't really know where they come from. And I think if you look back at bigger brands again, right, it's really promoting how nice is my coffee bean rather than where do they come from. And the more they see it, the more they remember, and the more people drink it, and the more you post about it, then you'll think that, hey, it's actually good coffee, right? You know why so many people drink it. Yeah, so I think, I think it's also that emotional, and it's also that on top of the head kind of branding. Uh, that makes people think that, hey, the coffee is actually good. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we've been doing um, to promote uh, what we sell. Uh. Maybe one last question. Uh, it's a typical question. Mm. Would you advise to the uh, people here, how do, you, how do they make sure their success is eventually into their startup? And maybe this is a tricky question to you. Even though you are CEO of Zeus Coffee, do you drink coffee every day? Yeah, I drink coffee every day. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, then, then, yeah. then you're okay to become CEO of Zusa. Okay. Yeah. So, what is the, the best advice that you can give to everyone inside the room okay. who started their business, not even, uh, even though they are not starting coffee business, but yeah. into their new startup? What the good advice that you can give to them? Okay. I, I think, right, I think uh, it's, it's quite funny because when you ask me whether if I drink coffee or not, then I should be CEO. Uh, the, every time when I interview someone, right, people always say, hey, I don't drink coffee. Can I still work here? Yeah, it's like, hey, I don't eat burger, can I still work in McDonald's? Uh, but no, la, I, mean, I mean, it's not a restriction. More important thing is it's still um, the passion, right, towards the business. How do you want to make your customers happy and walk out happy with a cup of coffee, right? Or maybe not coffee, could be chocolate. Because uh, we do have a lot of SKUs that uh, are non-coffee-based. Yeah? But in terms of advice, I really think that uh, if you ask me again whether if I can do this again uh, together with the team, I don't know. Yeah, uh, but it's really a combination of many things whereby uh, starting out the business at the right timing, um, having or identifying a target customer, and of course, if say there was touch wood, I mean, if there was no 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 pandemic, right, then uh, our acquisitions will be much tougher. <laughs> Uh, then we will probably go down the route of starting to raise money earlier just so that we can acquire much more customers. Um, but yeah, I think I, think, uh, I know like, back then when I was um, fundraising and all, right, or, or back in the days, right, people always tell you about the word hustle. Then I'm like, ah, all these founders don't know anything, when, right? But I really think now that I reflect back, right, it's actually true, you know, because most of the time that I, we spend during the entire pandemic, was really just working and working because we believe in the brand. And then another thing is you have no choice because huh, you cannot go anywhere, right? Pandemic, you got locked down, right? Morning, yeah, you want to get out from home, go to <coughs> office, and then you work. And then you tell your wife, oh, I cannot go back home, you know, because it's essential service. Huh? So yep. I need to get stuck in the office. Then you stay back later just so that you can party with your friends. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, uh, I mean, the party aside, but we still do work, huh? okay? Uh, yeah, so it's really putting the, the bigger answer here is putting in more hours and effort into the business. Yeah. And I think uh, then you get your fruits. Lah. 
And um, yeah, I mean, now that I look back, hustling is true. Uh, we really hustle through our times, uh, no sleep, and uh, really worried all the time in terms of how will we do. Um, yeah, these are the things. And, and hopefully, you'll be able to apply in the business in two, two three years, four years' time. Uh, you'll be able to see that uh, things will turn out better. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Nun Chen, thank you so much thank you, for thank you. being with thank us you, today.